Work in a public place? Then you need to retain your privacy with a VPN. Let's talk about it. Dave Taylor here, and I want to talk about virtual private networks, or VPNs. Now, you might not know what this is. This might be something you think, oh, is that something like those hacker types use? But the fact is, it's a simple technology, and boy, you should really be using it. Let's talk about the places where it's important to retain your privacy. Any public Wi-Fi, so that includes like Starbucks, that includes the public library, any public network, for example, a hotel, anything like that. There's lots of other reasons, but those are one of the biggest reasons is that when you use a network that other people are also using, you have no idea if they're monitoring what you're doing. Now you might say, hey, what kind of privacy do I need? I don't need to be obsessed about this. I'll just not go to my online bank while I'm at Starbucks. But that's not a great solution because things like Facebook and Gmail, all the stuff you do online, all the stuff you do on your computer, it's all open and exposed. And you might be surprised how often your account and password is being sent to re-verify your identity even though you think you're already logged in every single time someone else could actually snag that data and log in as you. Now, that sounds pretty bad, but there's more too. So what about things like your search history? What about your location? You might not realize it, but the computer is tracking your location. You don't need to be using a smartphone or anything like that. Even just a regular computer like this, go to Google Maps, go to Apple Maps and say, find me and then realize that if you can do that and have it figure out exactly where you are, so can other people. Me, I don't really like that kind of privacy. So I'm a big fan of VPNs and I use one all the time. And so the concept's really easy. If you think of the internet as this sort of big vague cloud, it's probably not a great metaphor, but imagine instead that it's a bunch of different destinations. And when you go to bing.com to do a search, or you go to facebook.com, you connect directly to that computer. Now, that means if someone's watching that connection, they can see what you're doing. But what if you had a central computer that everything routed to and then from there it expanded out? And what if the connection between your system and that remote computer was all encrypted? That's exactly what a VPN is and it gives you all sorts of interesting side effects. For example, if I go to Europe on a trip and I want to stay up on my latest Netflix shows, when I go and log in on my hotel Wi-Fi network, Netflix will say, uh, you're not in the US, you don't have access to these shows. Now for me, that's gonna be really frustrating because it's like, um, I'm a paid subscriber, I would like to just watch the next episode of my favorite show. So VPNs also give you the opportunity to spoof your location, which is really nice. Now there's a more serious side to this too because there are places where you are being blocked because of where you are. Obvious ones are at work or at school, they might block things like social networks. You might really want to go onto Facebook while you're in your school. Okay, the VPN would give you the ability to do that. But even more serious than that is there are countries where they block access to specific stuff. In China, for example, it's not easy to get onto Facebook at all, and it's really not easy to go and watch YouTube videos that haven't already been screened by the Chinese censors. Not super big fan of that. Twitter, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, a lot of these programs are being filtered by various countries and various governments, and if you live there, you might not want them telling you what you can visit online. A VPN solves that perfectly. Now, what else can we tell you? So, um, Hulu, again, if you're out of the country and you want to watch a particular Hulu show, you can actually pretend that you're in the US, for example, by using your VPN and choosing which of the many, many, many servers you want to actually connect to. So I often connect to a server in Dallas, Texas, for example. So if I'm using a piece of software or if I'm going to connect to a website that's checking location, it'll say, oh, you're in Texas. Okay, that's part of the US. You have access to all this content. 
very nice. Now, it's also the case that if you're using a VPN, it can really protect you if you're visiting the dark web. If you're doing stuff that I probably don't want to know about, like BitTorrent or something, really don't break the law, don't violate copyrights and stuff, but if you are intrigued by that and you do want to gain access to that, a VPN protects your privacy there too. So people in the Torrent community are huge fans of VPNs. Finally, here's another one, and this is a really modern one, is that when you do calls over VoIP or calls over Wi-Fi, that means that the public Wi-Fi that you're using for that phone call gives people the opportunity to tap and potentially analyze and listen to your call. No bueno. So again, a VPN can be a nice solution to that. And which VPN to use? I'll come back and talk about that in some other videos, but there's a lot of choices out there. I will say, whatever you choose, boy, it's going to be better than having nothing and just trusting all the people around you. I'm not hugely trusting of other people, but you know, get a good VPN and you could be in the middle of an internet cafe in the most dangerous, most likely to be hacked community and you're going to be safe. So, this is Dave Taylor, highly encouraging you to do some more research and find out about VPNs and I will catch you in my next video.